Taking a look at your class roster and as you begin to design your next unit, I notice a pretty uh, wide range of learner variability in regards to your map scores, knowing that 235 is... Um, the Can you talk a little bit about how you meet the needs of all your learners and how you design lessons to meet their needs? Mm -hmm. Uh, the first thing would be uh, looking at where they are in the bands, above or below the, the standard rate of 235. Uh, so I have four students uh, that are two or more uh, bands below the 235, uh, and five students that are one band below. In that, I have students uh, with IEPs uh, with reading goals. They are at um, a lower level on the RIT score um, in the reading. Uh, they do show more success in the math classroom, but I still do work with those students uh, with figuring out uh, where to support them with the reading in the math. Uh, along with that, we have two students uh, that are English language learners that do have a language plan that I do uh, make sure that I repeat directions for them. There's translators on uh, their device for them. Uh, they have a lot of graphic organizers to make sure that they're supported. Uh, I also have students that are gifted and need enrichment. I have two students that are one band um, above uh, above the 235, and then four students that are two or bands or more above. Uh, so making sure that uh, we are challenging them and enriching them. So as you begin to plan your units of study and um, your particular lessons, it's really important, like when you're planning your goals or your uh, learning intentions, that you're considering the success criteria or that the how is embedded? Uh, so for the success criteria, uh, we really look at very basic of what we want students to learn. Um, and it's the how in showing me what they know based off of the Common Core Standards. Uh, so whenever we design lessons, many lessons, stations, activities, uh, things of that nature, we want to make sure that we're always going back to the success criteria for all of the students, no matter if they need the modifications or if they need the challenge. Uh, we have the success criteria that we go off of. Clear learning intentions and success criteria will be displayed on the overhead projector as well as other areas of the room. We are learning to identify and evaluate equivalent expressions using laws of exponents. I can be successful when I use the laws of exponents to solve a complex problem and explain how the laws were used. How the students will identify and evaluate the equivalent expressions may look very different based on their learner variability. So the biggest thing with um with these lessons, it's, uh, the first thing that is with the structure of my room, that there are different choices in my room. Um, that there's an area for um, the whole group instruction. All students can be a part of it. They get to choose if they would like to be a part of that. But we also have different options if they would like to work at more of an independent uh, pace with videos. Um, they can use the textbook. They can use uh, different resources. Or they could work with a partner um, and learn in... Uh, also, just having different types of instruction in the classroom. We have videos for the students to use. Uh, I have a roadmap so the students know where they start and where they are going with that. I also have stations set up for extra practice. Uh, I also have a learning strategist that's in our base uh, that does come in uh, 30 minutes each day to work with strategy groups, uh, both students that struggle that need more support and modifications and students that uh, may have challenges um, or need to be challenged. So we do use um, our learning strategies in that form as well. Help sheets, keys, uh, things like that around the room. Also for the challenge, uh, taking where we are in the lesson and challenging them in different ways uh, to make sure that we're meeting on that students that need extra support. I want to make sure that I'm giving them that extra support when they need the support. And the students that understand the standard um, or understand the success criteria of the day, they can continue to um, go further with that instead of just sitting
to weigh in for it. So that was where really um, the options came in. That really knowing the learners and knowing um, that the learners need to uh, move around a lot more, especially in the 90 minutes, uh, and different types of ways of learning um, to make sure that the classroom is set up. But I do also have exit tickets um, and other types of formative assessments that are set in place to make sure that uh, they are showing proficiency um, on the success criteria for the day. And um, you had mentioned the roadmap, so what I, what's really, um, I think, significant about that is because you're you're taking into mind the executive functioning mm -hmm. skills of your students and how students need to know where they're going and where, um, where they're headed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's really key and that you use that so that students can start to monitor their own progress.